Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Welcome everybody. We're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons today. I won't go into a big history with Dungeons and Dragons, except uh, it was published in 1974. It was based off a 1971 game called Chainmail. But I'll discuss my interactions with the game, being a dungeon master, how it influenced my book, and what I might want to do with the channel eventually, and tabletop role playing games in general. So I was about eight years old. And my brother was playing with his friend. I think he asked me to draw a wizard. But I didn't play the game. It wasn't until, I guess, 5th to 7th grade, I think. Where I got into it real heavy. Played for years. Had a couple of lifelong friends. Some aren't with us. But we had a pretty big group at times. I would say about five people, seven people here and there, but a core of three people were always late night, all night players. It helped me in a time where I needed, I described this in my podcast, I Am I. It helped me with my creativity. At the time I was learning guitar, and I found that I would write my own stories and backgrounds on the characters. I would want to where to help people with their backgrounds and names. Eventually I started being a dungeon master. And I would say maybe 18, 19, I was consistently uh, DMing. Now, I know all the systems. I played them all, uh, considering Dungeons and Dragons became Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which was AD&D. And that's what I settle with to this day. It went through some revisions. I have a lot of the old books still around. And when new editions would come out, I would get the player's handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide. Learn what I could from them and adapt them to the second edition. In particular, the second edition created, uh, they were called Player's Options manual and it was like three or four books and it started with character points but the game mechanics stayed the same you used all the dice from ad and d it was still second edition they had put out players handbooks and really fleshed out the game for me to this day the mechanics are more aligned with my storytelling and my role as a dungeon master Although I can appreciate the other additions to a certain extent, I settled in and when I wrote my book in 2011-ish, I based it on monks and with addiction styles and the drugs would fuel their abilities. And I used the Oriental Adventures handbook that was, I think, uh, AD&D. I love all the characters. I played most of them at some point. Monk might be my favorite. And there's always the classic wizard or mage. But as I started DMing, writing my adventures, I went into a mode of storytelling. I did a little research, went to libraries, and developed like a little system of how I would run the adventure. I took the advice from all the Dungeons and Dragons lore that was out there. I played some other games here and there, like Rift, um, other tabletop games over the years. There's been so many people who come and go in these groups. Some people like to DM a certain game. So I'm always up for that. I always have fun. Uh, make the best of it. But like I said, I settled into the Dungeons and Dragons AD&D 2nd Edition Players Options. And it's a character point system in general. I think it's the most versatile that uh, Dungeons and Dragons has ever been. Although now it's a little more streamlined. 
And I have a current friend who runs a campaign with us. He runs it with 5e, and I have a ball. I love it. So it's not like I prefer to play in any world or any genre, because I have created, I've used the second edition players options to make a Western campaign I call Gunslinger. And in that, I have classes like Gunslinger, Soldier, just adapt to see for bandit and you know bring in other classes and as if they fit the uh, era but second edition was the most versatile for me to adapt everything and just start campaigns and write them even if i didn't have players just to get the ideas out i have friends who've done uh cia dudes uh, i've actually done my own CIA type um, real life campaigns where you play law enforcement or cartel and or mafia connections, a more espionage, real life Jason Bourne type stuff. So I'm up for anything. And as I started writing more, writing the stories, they knew I would want to write a book at some point. So I would fashion my adventures in a way where I would gain inspiration for the story and flesh it out through playing. And it was something I read about with Dungeons and Dragons uh, came out with Dragonlance and the writers of those novels talk about their role playing and putting it into the book. So I was always fascinated by that. Dungeons and Dragons has, has many fantasy settings. So Dragonlance was one of them, Forgotten Realms, Dark Sun, Ravenloft, Spelljammer. I have them all in one form or another, Planescape. So I've always been fascinated. I love role playing. I've uh, sort of adapted it for a, um, a therapy session, basically. Understanding what's going on with the brain, how it benefits from doing certain things and rolling a character, but that surprise of it feels like two hours, but four to six hours go by. So general role, role playing tabletop games I'm down for, and it influenced my book. So I wrote my book and role played the characters as I've made them up using the monk style, created their styles, which were the smoking monk style. The drunken monk was obviously an easy adaption. I had adapted it way earlier for a character who wanted to play a drunken monk. We love the Jackie Chan movies. The Dungeons and Dragons has been a real important part of my life. It's a great outlet for me. It gave me a way to come out of my shell a little bit. You, know, you tell stories, you make decisions and their characters you know, succeed and fail. It's a great group dynamic to have friends sit down for hours and have fun, enjoy the time that goes by fast. So uh, it's something I would recommend families to do. And I was thinking about how I would use this on the channel. So I think maybe the first test or two would be a general recording. I could see myself just getting the guys together. These days it's um, mainly three people, but we're getting so old now. We got families and people have other responsibilities. You move. I haven't been in the mindset in the last 20 years to create new groups and grow. That might change now because I'm in a better place mentally. So I'm thinking if I get the guys together, we usually get together every week and it depends on how much time we have and if we know we got more time over the weekend sort of thing. So it might be a movie night, it might be Dungeons and Dragons, it might be superheroes because we also like to play superheroes and I've done an amalgamation of every comic, every world, melded into one. So it doesn't matter. If one person wants to play Batman and or an associate in that realm, 
uh, DC company and wants to play Captain America from Marvel or even Dark Horse and I'll adapt to anything really and a lot of times if new players are around I see it as an opportunity to just ask uh, what do you like what are you into one example is a friend's girlfriend had said Battlestar Galactica is reimagining what's going on which I recommend highly. I'm probably going to do a podcast on it. So I turned the Marvel Saga system into a Battlestar Galactica campaign. We played with the card system, created the archetype for the classes, so the hierarchy in Battlestar Galactica, your pilots, uh, expertise, and started writing stories for it. And we had a, a great time. So I'll use it in many different ways, and on the channel, maybe that could be something to look forward to where if I get feedback, and it's like, oh, you know, I'd love to play, but I'm really into, and it could be a show. It could be Supernatural. You know, it's got 15 seasons. You can make characters in that world, and sometimes have guest appearances, and we do things like that. I've adapted like almost every action screen hero to the D and D system or either the Marvel saga system. So Rambo, Die Hog characters, Predator. As a matter of fact, we played not too long ago and one of my characters fought the Predators. So if I do a recording in basic audio, just of us getting together and whatever it might be that night, um I think I'm currently running a Witcher campaign preparing for the TV show that's coming out and that might be a possibility but it would be something everybody would be just jumping into because we've been playing for a while characters have a certain level I think it's like fourth level so I'm not sure maybe as a test it's not gonna matter just to have it out there but I might do that and we alter, alternate that with a superhero campaign where it's us in real life or our real personas in the Marvel or the superhero movies and we've got powers and we've been playing for a while. So we're in that bracket between like Iron Man level of power and Silver Surfer. So it might just be fun to put audio of these uh, campaigns or these sessions we run but it wouldn't be an introduction so i'm trying to think if i would do an introduction for uh ad and second edition rules plays manual plays options layout a uh, fundamental character sheet maybe attach a file and this way people could look at the character sheet fill in their information and have it ready to go because I do want to do tests with friends that I have that have moved so now we have the technology we have Skype and Facebook calls and ways to integrate them into the game again so why not do some tests so I've done a test here and there just to check things out but haven't played for a couple of hours and recorded it but it could be a way for to grow a little community of people who want to play and I see people on other shows on YouTube uh, talking about it which excites me but I haven't settled in in the D&D community I've been through a lot in the last 20 years and before that I was always into it would even go to a complete strategist in Manhattan join tournaments or DM role play at stores um, things like that but when life happens you get away from it so maybe I'll get back into it the community itself seems to be pretty awesome I'm not one of those people who is a snob with the edition I play with although I'll maybe argue the benefits I think it has over other systems or the other revisions to the Dungeons and Dragons system but I did input a little bit when they asked for uh, feedback on the fifth edition which they came out so I was part of that online where they sent out the packets to people. But as a community going on the forums, I 
Maybe I'll start doing that also, see if I pique some interest. So I guess we could do a random die generator site. People would jump on, make a phone call, let's say, on let's say Facebook or Skype. And you would basically listen. And that would lead to the next phase of it, which is a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, thank you, Tati, gave me a camera. It's an older model, but I want to use it for a top down view of the table. So this way, if we set up a map and miniatures, at times we do when we have the space and the uh, equipment, let's say, accessories. I'd like to get a drop down view of the table, maybe another camera view of the players in DM. I mean, this is my vision in the future because Dungeons and Dragons is still going to be a part of my life. Uh, if it was up to me, I'd play way more often. So I was thinking making it a part of the channel in a bigger way. I'll probably start a playlist or a section of the site on YouTube. Maybe get some feedback. And I think the progression will be audio test, uh, just general record the session that we're playing, put it online. And hopefully it'll evolve into, you know, I could see myself doing the camera with the green screen thing behind me if I get everything set up the right way. I'm taking baby steps basically and using this more as therapy for now. But if my passion is uh, reignited in this area, I could see me devoting time and energy to it. Maybe doing the camera angles, like I said, miniatures. There's just some people out there who do great work. I've watched some of the sites and I'm impressed. Like I said, I haven't been too vocal and maybe that'll change now. So I don't have any sites to quote or send people to. But you can look out there if you're coming to this channel because you know me or just a Dungeons and Dragons description of the title gets you, you'll have an idea. And I think there are enough programs that are out there for people to use. Like I said, random die generators. So if I say use a 20 side or a 10 side or you, know, you just roll it yourself or I can do it. I've done that test too where the person doesn't even have a character sheet. And I'll just let them join. A lot of times you're in the middle of a campaign or a session, let's say, and a friend comes over who doesn't play often, so you're not prepared. And you just bring him into the game so he joins in, has fun. You don't worry about the little particulars. Um, <laughs> around 1990, 1991, I went to a rainbow gathering. But maybe I'll do a podcast on the rainbow family. Anyway, 20,000 people gather in Allegheny National Forest, bunch of, you know, new age hippie type of event. And I DM'd about 25 people at a, at a little circle. <laughs> so I, all I had was like paper. I cut it, I ripped it into different sections, put people's name and some numbers on it which what i would understand and i let them get involved and then as we sat around the circle i think i had all together like three sets of dice and i would just hand them out when when needed but the point is the storytelling getting wrapped up in a character living through it for a little while in your head and it progresses and there's no real ending to the game is the, uh, I guess, the phrase that's used. So, AD&D will probably be my focus. Although I will do superheroes, and my main go-to with superheroes right now is the Marvel Saga system. Although, as I mentioned, I played, or have, almost every other system anyway. Uh, the DC role-playing system I have. I didn't get the new Marvel one that was like based on the Die 20. I'm not a big fan of the Die 20 system uh, as, as a dungeon master. 
um, Star Wars. I remember the old Die Six system for Star Wars. Uh, Star Trek, I have the, that system too. All the hard cover books, the manuals. So I can see myself, or even like I said, adapting anything. So this might be a fun um, dive into role playing again. Maybe making it more um, attainable for people who want to play who were part of my group for 16 years. I have people who play with me. As a matter of fact, the two main people who play with me are over 20 year players. One is the one I started playing with when I was, you know, fifth grade to seventh grade. So, and I'm 40, going to be 49. So you can count those years. Anyway, D and D, Dungeons Dragons, has always been a passion. I hope it is yours. Look into it. It's fun. Great family game. You can play any genre, and it focuses on medieval fantasy. But I, like I said, I've adapted it for many different things. I will turn this section into other things. I'll do um, a superhero role playing. Maybe get a little more into the Marvel Saga system. And until next time, everybody, take care. I'll see you then.